Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're gonna to be working on this 2001 E39 525i wagon. And although this car doesn't have a lot of miles, it is due for a ton of service. And we're gonna break these things down for you in this mini series as we restore this car into tip top condition. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight to the video. Now, I wasn't kidding when I said that this thing is a low mileage example. It clocks in right around 72,000 miles on the dash. And as you can see, this one has the dead pixel instrument cluster problem, which is super common on these cars. So even though it is lower mileage, it does have that issue. Now, that being said, this car does suffer from a few things having not been serviced before. One of the big ones being the cooling system and the entire belt pulley system. So that's what this episode is gonna be about. We're gonna focus on these two systems and basically do a complete overhaul. We are even gonna be doing a conversion from the old spring powered tensioner assembly to the new hydraulic powered tensioner assembly. So let's go ahead and get this car on the lift We'll pop the hood and then we'll take a look underneath and start disassembling it as we want to get access to all these things and replace them with the new bits. Now when you do a close inspection of the engine bay here, you can see just how things have started to compound up. Multiple coolant leaks, multiple power steering leaks, as well as oil leaks it looks like under the car. So a lot of things here have not been serviced on the car. It is low mileage, yes, but I'd rather have a car that has been fully serviced with more miles than something that has never been touched before and you know starts to look like this, I guess. So now we're gonna start taking apart the cooling system. And the first thing that we have to do obviously is gonna be drain it. So let's go ahead and pull off this drain plug from the radiator and then we'll be able to get all the coolant out. At the same time, we're gonna remove the cap and kind of loosen up the expansion tank because we're gonna have to remove that later when we get the shroud off. So now it is time to attack this fan clutch. Now, if you know anything about working on a 90s or 2000s model BMW, you'll know that the fan clutch for the water pump is probably the most difficult thing to remove, especially when it's the first time that it's been removed from a car. And I think that's exactly what happened on this car here. So you'll see me attack it from a few different angles. Uh, I do have you know, a couple special tools but the steel wrench that I had, that you know, the flat one that's supposed to work for this, it actually ended up bending around the fan clutch, so that was useless. And then I tried using an adjustable wrench and that was pretty solid, but still I just couldn't get this thing loose. So we tried using a breaker bar, we tried using heat from a blowtorch. At the end of the day though, I just could not get this thing to budge at all. So that's when you know you have to resort to plan B and plan B is basically dismantling the fan blades from the fan clutch itself and that way you can get the shroud out and start getting things off. Basically the water pump is now permanently mated to the fan clutch assembly and you have to replace all three of these, you know, including the water pump pulley, which is now stuck in there. You have to replace all three of them now at the same time. It's just three five millimeter Allen head screws that hold the fan clutch fan to the fan clutch. And after that, we've got access to everything and we can continue with the belt service. So 
So now we're gonna go ahead and try to take the water pump off. And in order to do that, first we have to remove the belt, of course. So once the belt is out of the way, we should be able to get the four screws off that hold the pulley to the water pump itself. And if we can just get the pulley further enough forward, we should be able to access the four water pump nuts. And those are 10 millimeters. And if we get all those off, we should be able to pull the water pump off itself. And as I said, ours is gonna be attached to the fan clutch assembly because we couldn't get it separated in the first place. Here, I'm even trying on the bench to get it loose. Guys, I promise you this thing was not moving. Here I'm just removing the lower belt for the air conditioning. That way we can remove the drive belt because it kind of blocks it in there. And we'll replace the tensioner for that along with the belt later. But now we're gonna turn our attention to the thermostat. And first off, you have to loosen the engine hanger that's at the front here in front of the, I think, Venus solenoid. And the top is an 11 millimeter nut and the bottom is a 13 millimeter on the thermostat. And then you have three other 10 millimeter bolts that are on the thermostat itself you have to remove. And then you should be able to get it free and pull it out from the car. From there, we're gonna turn our attention to the pulleys and we're gonna be replacing the idler pulley, which is right there, part of the alternator assembly. And then below it, you have the tensioner as well that we're going to be replacing now today we're upgrading from the standard spring tensioner assembly to the newer hydraulic powered one and the reason that's better is that because it has a hydraulic strut in there it serves to dampen the force of the belt and keep it a little more steady a little smoother you know and so that's a great upgrade to do if you have an m54 especially one that hasn't been reserviced with that newer pulley style yet so i'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of the differences here I'll also show you how to tell a bad bearing from a good one. So go ahead and listen to that right here. So the hydraulic tensioner upgrade is a great thing to do. And if you buy the entire kit, let's say from FCP Euro, then you'll get the tensioner with all the hardware included to do this upgrade. And it's a direct bolt on upgrade. You don't need to do any additional modifications to your engine block because it's pre-drilled for this new tensioner assembly. So this thing bolts up with three 13 millimeter screws instead of two like the old one. And once you've got all of those torqued down, you can go ahead and add the pulley on. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish with the top idler pulley. And then from there, we'll focus on getting the belt routed. When I'm installing the water pump, I like to add a little bit of spray degreaser on the O-ring so it's a little bit slippery going into the engine block and just try to press it in as hard as you can. And once it is in there, just add a few bolts to keep it from backing out and then you'll be able to torque them down by hand. You don't need a lot of torque on these things because it's the O-ring that seals up against the block. It's not the torque that you're putting down on these nuts.
So now we've got everything installed and the front of the motor is starting to look real fresh. We just have to go ahead and route this belt correctly and get it installed under tension. And of course we didn't forget about this little tensioner for the AC compressor. We just had to save the best one for last. So that's going to conclude our video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and if you do love E39 content, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new and you haven't yet. As always, I hope everyone has an awesome day and we'll see you next time.